and his buddy Chuck. Just, you know, Chuck. <laughs> he's, he's new. <laughs> he's new. He's just, just, just doing his thing, whatever that thing is over there. How you doing, buddy? Hi, guys. Fine. <laughs> You're doing good, man. Chuck's yeah. a little frozen there. He's got he, stage fright. See? He, I know. He gets nervous around me all the time. I know this. It's because I'm a better host than he is. It's That's just what it comes down to. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> that's why I'm in the middle. I'm like, that's hey, guys. Right. Hey, guys. Keep to your corners. I, I think he actually legit has some internet stuff going on over there because I'm looking at his bar and it's like, it's low. There it goes. He's the, oh. he, he, he has disappeared off into the ether. So we can really shit talk him now. I, uh, well, no, uh, he's been, I actually hopped out because like the stream went dead. And I was like, okay, I don't know if it's it, you guys yeah, or no, me. It's you. It, no, no, it, it's, your internet, it's your internet connection. I know that for a fact because I can watch. I have like these like bars here about how well the connection is. You were at like red. Now you're just perfect. Now you're perfectly there. So I, I don't know. So you're perfect, Chuck. Yeah, absolutely. Be perfect. nice. Yes. I will give Chuck some huge credit though. He's a great writer. He really, really is. He really, really Thank is. Thank you. I, uh, I reviewed your book. Like I don't know if you, if you, if you, I know Chuck read it. I don't know if Sean's read the review or not. Absolutely, so, absolutely. Yeah, yeah no, you, you, you guys have a really cool book. You really, really do. You know what was fun is that there was one thing that you had an issue with, but I never have a problem with anyone having any issues at all. But there was mm -hmm. one thing that you pointed out, and I was like, if you'd read issue three, it would have answered exactly what you were talking about. Oh, yeah, that's fair, right? But yeah. I, it's a weird see here's the weird thing right i'm i i do review books and i am genuinely for how generous some of you really are i kind of draw like a little line for myself though too about how generous should i be because it, it like okay i'll give you an example russell actually gave me the entire ichabod like 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 digital file and he didn't have to like you just i was like and I've supported him in the past, so I don't feel like 100% guilty. But say mm -hmm. someone like Paul Gomez, that I haven't had the chance to support a book of his yet, mm -hmm. I'm going to be very careful what I take from him. Because, yeah. Right, right. Because it's, and so, and I kind of feel the same way too, because I, I, I like, Chuck knows I support him big time. Like, it's for all the shit talking I do, I, 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 I do support him quite a bit. Yeah. But there, but there's a, there is a fine line to me. To me I only really need to review one issue, right? I only yeah. need to review one. And so I'm, I, I, I treat this professionally. If I really like it, I should pay for it. I kind of, that's just, that's my, I know that sounds like a really strange philosophy, but I think that's just the way it should be. Everybody's got yeah. their thing, dude. I'm not going to knock it. If you end up liking something when you dip in a little bit and you want to back it, that's, that's why we do it, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I would have backed it sooner, but honestly, you know what's killing me right now? My Canadian dollar and shipping. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, it's funny because there's this 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 woman who does really weird reviews. They're basically she calls them panel reviews, and she'll do reviews. And as she's doing them, she'll take. Well, no, she doesn't call them panel reviews. She calls them screenshot reviews. She'll take a screenshot and she'll be like, and she'll just make a comment right there. And it, it's almost like watching one of those YouTube reaction videos, only yeah. it's a comic book review. And it's really funny and it's a lot of fun. She's very supportive, but I know that like she's she's unable to buy the books. Yeah. It's not it's not in the budget. Um and, and I get that. So it's like, why not instead just give her the fucking books? Let her review them. She helps us out a little bit. And you know what? She gets to enjoy them. And really, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I get it. It's just, again, I just been, I've been on the other side of that situation where it's like, hey, like, right, there, there is a line of, and I just, I just feel this personally, of too much. Right? So I just like. Feel you. Yeah. Do you ever feel guilty when, like, you've done a review or an interview with someone? You got all this stuff and you're like. Now I feel like I really should buy it because I really truly enjoyed it, and I feel bad for enjoying it without supporting in any financial way. So I, I'm fifty again. I'm fifty fifty on this one, right? Yeah. It's fifty fifty. I'm fifty fifty on this one. It depends on who and where they're at. For example, mm -hmm. for example, I did a little book list for my birthday. I don't know if you guys saw that or not. I don't know if you did or did. That's that's cool. It was like a little book list. Three of those authors have actually sent me their book. 
I actually don't feel guilt. I, I don't feel guilty about that one because I, 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 it was just, I was pleasantly surprised. I didn't expect it, but I was pleasantly yeah. surprised. I, I don't, I don't feel guilty about something like that. I feel guilty. The, I, again, I'm looking at someone like Paul, like who's just coming into his own and he's really establishing his, his foot, footsteps. Someone like that, I am a lot more inclined to be very careful what I ask for because Paul will give it to me. Now, I also know, like, mm -hmm. this is the other thing, too. This is the other thing, too. It, it's it's something I realized I'm trusted. Like, that's something that's something that I, I think I and I don't take that lightly at all. Like, people trust me. They might not. They may not like me, but they trust me. My word's good. I want to keep it that way. So yeah. it's about right. And, that, and that's and that's the and that's the important thing for me. Now, I'll tell you where I feel like a complete tool. And this is the honest. That's honest truth now. Cause I know some of you so well asking for your autograph. Now I just feel like a tool. Right. Oh, oh dude. Cause... I'm always happy to do it. Yeah. No, no, I, I, no. Cause I know you like, I know Chuck, we, we had like, like it, it's, it, I get, okay. So it, it's like this. It's like, and I, and this is that, this is what like when I don't, it's easier when I don't know you because now it, because I'm a fan of, uh, I'm a fan of somebody and just a fan. And I don't know them very well it's easier to grab that because it's a little piece of them. I've had serious conversations with Chuck about my career. That's yeah. a really cool, that's a really cool thing. I actually consider that more valuable than the autograph. Now, if I'm asking for somebody else, that's different, right? You know what though? I think the issue is, is that you're looking at the autograph purely on what it can do for the book. You know, oh, it's going to raise the value of the book, all that kind of shit. Yeah. But you know, I can't tell you how many books I have signed that will never fucking get sold. It's not yeah, the point. The point was just that I now have an even closer connection to that creator because yeah. I have this important book by them and I know that they physically touched it because that yeah. signature is right fucking there. And whether that book ever matters in the zeitgeist or it's ever worth anything or not, it doesn't matter because it's worth something to me. And that's why I kept it. And that's why I got it signed. So yeah. I don't think, I don't think that's a big deal, but like you were talking about Paul and I, he, he's a fellow Texan. He's based out of Dallas. We did Dallas fan expo together. Like he, he was like oh, yeah. two aisles over from me or something. Oh yeah. He came by and he gave me my comps because I edited a couple of his books and then the motherfucker comes behind the table and starts selling my comps to the people and handing me money. And I'm like, why don't you go to your own fucking table, sell your own fucking book, and make you some money? I'm doing okay over here. And he's like, I oh, know, I'm just like, I don't know, I'm, I'm helping you out. I'm like, I can sell, homie. But I'm like, you're selling That's your book to make money for me. Yeah. That's that's dumb. I love you, but that doesn't make sense. These will get sold. Don't worry. Yeah, no, I like, but that's my point. Like, he's a sweet dude. Like, he's one of the sweetest dudes I've oh, had yeah. on the show. Yeah. So, I again, it's 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 the person I'm dealing with. Ultimately, is what it comes down to, yeah. right? I I, yeah. I look at them and go, Paul will give me everything, and I know this, so I don't ask for everything because it's not in his best interest or mine. Right. It's better that yeah. it's better. It's better that if I do ask for, let's say I want to review Bushy Boob because that's of all his books. That's the one I really want to grab. Right. At some point, yeah. I'm going to ask for just issue one, just issue one, because that's that I feel is a fair equivalent exchange. Right. Yeah. What I would suggest to you, though, is if you ask for issue one, buy issue two. No, that's Be a, that's and a, the reason a, I'm saying that is because. It's it's a two parter, and it actually ends. I, I got to I got to uh, edit issue two, and it has nothing to do with my part in it, but it ended really well, and I really liked that 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 uh, piece, and it plays much stronger as a book when you get to read them both. Back no, back. no, it, that's no, no, it's fair. I'm just, but you, but you get why. I, but again, you understand. Oh, yeah. like, there's a deliberate line there because I don't yeah. want to cross it, and and I don't want to damn. I, like I said, I'm very fortunate. I get people like you. I get people like Marissa Mayer who actually will come on the show. I I don't take that for granted. So I want to make sure I'm as fair to everybody as I possibly can be. I'm not perfect, but I try. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. 
Well, and Sean, you edited for years too for outright geekery. So you've got very much the same thing where you were given like PDFs and whatnot, and you got the chance oh. to like check out people's books and talk about them and everything. So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's it it was kind of a cool experience because um when I was doing reviews and stuff for them, you'd get not only the indie books, but you'd also get like mainstream books. But um they kind of gathered indie books and collected those and gave me the indie focus and i was kind of like the indie book guy so it was really neat because i got to you know i guess through those those books and that unique opportunity got to really connect and make friends because then i was hunting people out and trying to make connections with the people that are making the really good books that i was like oh okay I'm going to be a fan of these people and find out what they're doing and find out where I need to go and who I need to chum up with and learn. You know what I mean? Steal shamelessly when it comes to great ideas. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, no, I, I get, I get to, I get to steal all the time. It's fantastic. I mean, just, but it, it's, yeah, no, it's true. I mean, look, I've done a lot of these podcasts, like a lot of them. I've got some of the best and brightest people to come on the show. I just, I have, and I, I'd be, I'd be lying if I told you I didn't benefit from everybody that shows up here. I do. Yeah. Like, it's not, it's not a thing. So, um, you know, I get that, I get that privilege. And, but for me, like the reason why I love shows like this is I get them get to know the people. So Chuck kind of quietly does this. I'm going to actually get this in there. Sean, how did you get in the comics? Like, what was your thing? Uh, mine Okay, so as a fan, I, I was a fan of comics early on, um, just as like kind of an escape from a tumultuous childhood, and because I liked drawing, and drawing was a good escape for me as well, and it, it was a good way to introduce myself to different like poses and different types of drawings and moods and stuff like that. And so that took a seat for a long time until I was in high school and got acquainted with a uh, a guy who in, who pitched me an idea, and I got involved in his book. Now, that didn't get made right away because, again, as life would have it, it got shelved again for, like, another 14 years. So that time passes, and all of a sudden, I'm like, hey, dude, what about this thing? And he's like, oh, you're still interested? Yes, I am. Let's do it. And uh, my grandmother, she had told me, you know, hey, look, it, it would really mean a lot to me if – you did something with your artwork. You've squandered it up until this point. And before I die, I want, I want to see you do something with, with your talent. And she was always a, a fan of mine. She'd put it up and show it off to her friends and stuff. Cause I would do scratch boards and paintings and stuff like that. So I said, okay, grandma, no problem. And then she passed away. So, then I'm obligated because I made this promise to her to now follow through with this promise that I made and start making comic books. And so as a side note to that, I justified it also with the fact that I've never been really well to do. And so this would be a way for me to have something that I would be able to leave for my kids when it's my turn to pass. Oh, I understand. I, I, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. So Chuck, who's winning? He is or you are? Uh, it's me. And the, dog. the the dog's doing pretty good. He's holding his own. Say hi, yes. guys. Oh, we, uh, we were wrestling. <laughs> I, I saw that. I, I want. I want. I want to know who was winning because I, I wasn't sure there for a second there. <laughs> he was holding his own, surprisingly yeah. enough. We just seem to go <laughs> It, 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 it's okay. Like I said, I've had a three-year-old. I, I actually, the last video, a short video I posted was Harrison is my nemesis. He just shows up. Whenever I knew Madeline Dale, he just shows up every episode. One time he was there for 45 minutes. So the dog is actually a, le a lesser, he's a lesser. Right. <laughs> that makes sense. My, my, my super, like seriously, my, my author bio, my super, my super, my super villains are, three-year-old children and dogs. I don't know what it says about my maturity level exactly, <laughs> but you know, it is what it is, right? But I do understand grandmother promises. I'm actually keeping one from a promise to my grandmother next year. I pr so I made, at 10 years old, she always would joke about actually buying diamonds. And I actually, so back in the days when we had cool toys in the cereal boxes, 
I pulled oh, yeah. out a bracelet one time. There was all these like little diamond stickers, and I made her a little diamond little bracelet. She still actually has it. Mm. It's actually kind of cool. But I want to actually keep my promise next year. I promise to buy diamonds, and, and I'm going to keep my word next year. So your grandmother still uh, still with us? Oh yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, no, I'm going to keep that promise next year. I I'm a man, I, much like Sean. I'm a man that believes in the promises he makes. Even if nobody expects me to keep them, I expect me to keep them because I made that promise. It's kind of a weird. Maybe I'm weird that way. But I'm good that way. I'm good being. Yeah, because you guys are all like honest and integrity and all that. And for me, I'm like, you know what? Promises are made to be broken. And really, like, why not? Why not get used to people? Uh, get people used to the disappointment of life by disappointing them repeatedly. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I'm kidding. The, the, kidding. The, 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 Mostly. Yes. <laughs> I, can just hey, I mean if anyone if any one of us said that we made a promise that we or, sorry that we've never made a promise that we broke i'd call you a fucking liar like i think it's all happened but the intent is obviously to not do that yeah no i've been i've been exceptionally late on promises too like i that that, that bothers me as well that actually bothers me as well but I'm a big believer in that. I just know what happens when people count on you, and that's that means something to me. So well, it's, it's I try really my best. Hard too, because when you when you fulfill a promise like the one that I made to my grandmother, it's really hard even to be like successful at that pro at completing that promise. Because for me, when it comes to like Belial and making comic books, I get to say, hey. I did this thing, but you don't ever get to hear her saying, I'm proud of you or thank, you know, you're a man of your word and you followed through and I'm so proud of what you did. You set out to do it and I don't get that opportunity, which is really, really hard, but. Dude, she'd be, dude, dude, dude honestly, she'd be proud of you. Right? Like, I'm like, motherfucker, are you Sisyphus? Are you just rolling the rock up the hill constantly and it's rolling back down again? Like, yeah, for yeah, real? Yeah, no, 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 yeah, yeah, no because, because you did it. Yeah! You, you did it. That's what matters. I don't... I Look, we put something out there, whatever that is. There's no guarantee what's going to happen. Right? Right? There's none. But you did it. That says an awful lot about who you are as a person, period. Sean, I know you've so never done this show before, but this is the show that makes you cry because he's so fucking nice and he has like he's so motivational and stuff. So he's going to – he's you're going to cry. Like I'm just letting you know. I apparently made John cry a little bit yesterday. I was a little shocked when I read the, the note this morning. The John Westhoff? Yeah, I was shocked. Yeah, to be fair – He's a little bitch, so uh, <laughs> that's what, dude. He and I just show everyone where we have like constant beef. And the funny thing is, he started it. Like I was always really nice to him, and then he just like kept beefing on me. And I'm like, hey, dude. Um, there was one time where I wouldn't say he went too far, but it was a little rough. And I was like, hey, are we still joke beefing? Because I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be mad at you. And he's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm totally playing with you, man. I'm. I'm trying to get you going. And I'm like. Oh, cool. Fine. We're good. Yeah, and no, no. brace hey, yourself, hey, motherfucker. <laughs> like, but no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. You always gotta make sure. No, but I, I was, it was like I woke up. This, I woke up. And I looked at my Facebook feed. I'm like, oh, that's really sweet. I think I made him cry a little, right? And I, <laughs> it's like, no, like go. But seriously, there are so many people in life that don't do what they say they're gonna do. It's one of the like, like it, there's so many. You did. That automatically puts you in like a stratosphere. Very few people hit, honestly, right? What now? Whatever, whatever it takes you. I, again, I'm never, I'm never going to be the guy that's going to promise you that you're going to go to the moon, but you're going to go somewhere because yeah. you did it. It's true, you know. I did make so I, I think I did make Sean smile there a little bit. So now hopefully I hit that hit home. So I'm quick. I'm quick to smile, man. <laughs> yeah. So. I actually, okay, so how did you two meet? Like, I've heard a little bit of this from Chuck's side of the story. What's your side of the story? Uh, Chuck's OnlyFans page. Okay. Yeah. Huge fan. What, what, what was it the special? 
Was it like the special um, Sunday Sunday special? That, that that's what got you in. Scrolling through, I saw a free preview. Figured I'd check it out. And I was like, oh, 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 okay, I'm in. And he went when, premium then, pretty quick, though, folks. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. hey, hey, listen, hey, listen. It, 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 guy, we, it, Chuck knows how to use his money maker. That's all I gotta say about that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think didn't we didn't we meet through the uh, indie comic conspiracy page? Chuck? We did, yeah. So, um, from working with Outright Geekery and doing the reviews there, um, I made a Facebook page for indie comic creators um, as kind of a launching point for people that are jumping in or want to learn so and socialize, network, and share success, failure, tips, tricks, uh, works in progress, things like that. And the core of those people um, were really, really super strong. And Chuck was one of those people. And I think he was really active and given a lot of feedback and made him an admin on the page. And then through just talking, we kind of just connected. And that was under um, doing his Welcome to the Void comic book. So that was pretty rad. It's like he brought me in as an anchor for, for Welcome to the Void. Yeah. Okay. And that's something else I kind of want to mention too. Like inking is becoming a lost art. And actually, when I was I was pleasantly surprised actually when I was looking at the review. It's like, oh, there's an inker on this one, and it's you, right? So yeah. Um, I think when you think about okay, so I I think the term inker, when it comes to some of those things, is being overutilized and underappreciated. Because I think there's a lot of people that are tracing over their own artwork, but aren't diving into the inking aspect of what that truly is. So adding um, extra line depth or having somebody be able to go back over the artwork for line correction, um, consistency, um, more like details, more shadows, background depth, stuff like that. And I think when a lot of people are like, oh, I ink my own stuff, Sometimes you fall into that pit where it's just them re-going over their baselines. And so, yes, it's ink, but are they inking? It's a little bit different, I feel, anyway. Mm -hmm. So I try to focus whenever somebody brings me onto a book, I will definitely look at, like, the pencils and stuff they have there, and I will constantly be trying to level up what already exists. Otherwise, mm -hmm. people aren't getting what they're paying for. And, well, and, and so I think a lot of it just happens because well, we're, we're in the, the indie realm. And for indies, it's cheaper to not have an inker. Like, let's just be fucking it is. real here. It's, yeah. you know, you have a guy who's going to go back over his own lines and I have to save money somewhere. And if this guy, like, you know, let's say I get a, a penciler for um, 40 bucks a page and I get an inker for 25 but the uh, penciler says, look, I'll do my own inks and charge you 50 a page. Yeah. Like, why? Yeah, why yeah, you kind of have to. So, exactly. I mean, it's tough. But, yeah. Dude, I, I just continue inking, one, because I like the different types of styles that people have. And I love challenging myself to kind of adapt to those styles. But also, my, my fingers crossed hopes is that eventually – um, some of these pencilers that I'm work, like in the community with, they're going to be so busy that eventually they'll pick up a book that is going to end up having tight deadlines. And so I want them to know my name and what I'm doing so that way I can be brought along to help them be successful and, and, and reach even higher altitude with somebody they feel comfortable that said, oh, I know this guy. Not very many people use them, but now I need it. I I definitely saw like you added to the expressiveness of Belial one. Like I, I the thing I loved about it is like there was almost a Chuck Jones esque facial like with everything. Like everything had everybody had a character, and it definitely added. You definitely added to that. It was it was part of the fun of the book. Actually, it's like you know. It, 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 everybody's got a personality. You know, I don't necessarily see everybody on the page. I know everybody's got a personality, right? Dude, it, it, we got we kind of got really lucky in that aspect is that um, Gregory Warrenchak used to be a um, storyboard artist for a video game. 
And I don't know if he likes me talking about that part, but it is a very real thing from his past. And it was like the Prince of Persia video games. Oh, wow. So it's not even like a little thing. And when he told me that, I was like, say, say what again? Yeah. And it's, he never talks about it. It just randomly came up. And, but you can tell it in the stuff that he's laying down. So to be able to lean into what he starts out on the paper and kind of try to tuck that in nice and tight is, is so much fun for me. Yeah. And also, like one day, man, who knows? I mean, you, I mean, you also now got video game. You, you worked on a video with a video game guy. I might, might actually see some some space someday in a real video game. That might actually be another area you could go into. I'm gonna tell you, like after working on that and then being able to sit there and ink um, the variant cover from Thomas Tenney for issue number two, which is pretty rad, and then um, inking for Chris Mads variant cover. There's there's been quite a few little benchmark things that I feel have been really really cool to have. That's a good dog cover too. Yeah. What's that? The good dog cover. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Um, I did get pulled in by um, Garrett Gunn, who's a buddy of mine, who's doing the Source Point <clears throat> uh, Press book, Good Boy. And, good Boy. Uh, that's I it. was brought in to ink the cover. Uh, a, a special limited edition variant cover of Ink of Good Boy, and so I do have my copies of those, uh, my comp copies of those. So I have a very limited run edition of those Good Boy covers, both in like a, um, I guess like a metallic cover, and then the rate the standard cover. So that was pretty dope to be able to have and added to my my checklist. Congratulations for making it to Source Point Press. I give you a hair. Digital high five. Yeah. 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 So, obviously, this is like your, this, the last three is your current focus. But, Chuck, I wanted to ask something because I, I, I have a hunch based on some of our private chats. I saw you put a post like, I've learned how to say no. And I wanted to say, congrats. I haven't learned how to say no. I'm learning how to say no. I'm still <laughs> bad at it. Let's get He's that fucking straight. Yet. I'm still, yo, I love it. Oh, dude, yes. Oh, it's so, there's so much, like, endorphins that come from saying yes. The the potential, what could come of it? But it, it, so many of those yeses end up turning into, I might, like, massive no's down the road just because you don't have time and whatnot. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I have a slightly different perspective on the, on that word, and that's this. I'm saving myself and sometimes I'm saving the person I'm saying no to grief because we might not be the right yeah. fit at the right time. Like I've learned, I've learned this. It's a very valuable lesson, right? I want my time on things that I know that I'll be appreciated. Right. So, and hopefully, I don't know if it's going to be the, this year is a chance, but for sure next year I make my comic book editing debut. Actually nice. I did, I did road kill rampage number four, which is fun. nice dude. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah. I had fun. I had fun with that. So I'm hoping to do some more editing. Actually, I'm, I'm probably going to do more comic work next year, one way or the other anyway. So it's going to be kind of fun. So I'm breaking in or something like that. Right. So every inch counts, man. But, uh, that's right. Every that's inch. what I tell my wife. That's right. That's right. <laughs> it's it, it's not what you got. It's what you do with it. Right. That's I, I have to believe that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have to. Fair enough. I'm not like I said. <laughs> I'm glad when he's not here, I could just imagine her response. She's right there, but she's not listening. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Wendy. No, that's All right. <laughs> no, um, but yeah, you seem like you both have a blast with this book. Oh yeah. If if you could see all of the the jokes and stuff that don't make the cutting floor, like yeah. it's back and forth a lot. Well, I, I can just go based on the jokes that did make the cutting floor. Like, I, the first time I laughed was the whole chain thing. Can I hold the chain? Maybe in a couple of millennia. It's like, okay. okay oh, yeah. I, I, I heard that. I read that. It's like, okay, Chuck had some fun right there. Like, you could just tell, right? right. Yeah, the first, the first issue was really kind of an experimental thing, even for us, um, with – where to ride the line and see where people are going to lean in a little bit. 
And so it was kind of refreshing to get a lot of that feedback and find out, are people getting it? Yeah. No, well, this book wants to be a bit of a, and I say this in like the most loving of ways, it wants to be a bit of a dirty book. It doesn't want to be clean. No. Right. It wants to be, yeah. it wants to be dirty. It wants to be, it wants dirty and entertaining the heart, the heart of the book though. And I think this is what I really dig Doug, with what I read so far was the whole friendship thing that actually is under this. I like, like that is where the book's heart really is. It's not him revolting against hell. It's his buddies dealing with all the pressure. Off. He's going to lose. He's going to lose. Are you going to stick with him? when it gets really tough because eventually it's going to and you can see that that's the heart of the book everything else you can just have a blast with right yeah right so that's that's i i loved how you beat war it was like this is awesome right it's the best way it's the best way to win like with the, and i'm not spoiling anything because anyone that hasn't read it yet it, it it's funny i actually laugh when I read we, that. we have upset a couple people because of that but it's worth it yeah. because it's unexpected. And we're like, oh, you got an emotional response from that. Okay. And it's big Good. enough for letting us know. Okay. Then we're doing what we need to do. Yeah. And if anybody wants to say bullshit to that, I have a fun little, like, I have all things an RPG story. Right. And it's this. I had, I, I was using, I was the GM, the game, the game master. So I decided to throw in Puck from Midsummer's Night Dream Puck as a fun, just something fun to do to mess around with the, with the, with the guys. Without any real prompt, just only a little bit of prompting from me, they ended up working for him. And it was entirely their idea. It was like one of those things where I just realized if you just make it seem like you have the upper hand, sometimes people just fold. Right? And that's as yeah. much as they give it. Right? And that's what happened. And that's what happened there. It was like, right? What? Oh, sorry. Keep going. No, no, go right ahead. Yeah. No, it's just it's funny, like the way you're describing and talking about the book. Is the book? It does have intentions of its own that we we didn't intend to. Like Sean had a badass um, hell book. It was going to be very much horror, and then he brought me in, and suddenly it was a badass book, but it was more comedic than all the rest of that stuff and then you know and we were we were very much and then greg warren chat comes in and starts throwing nudity in there mm -hmm. and i didn't write any nudity and i even said to to sean i'm like i didn't write that nipple man he's like yeah what do we do and we were both just kind of like i i it's hell we've said fuck we don't even know how many times it's so be what's a nipple, this, right? Right? Yeah. What's a, what's a nipple? So we left it in there, and all of a sudden, nipples, nipples. You know, like he's having fun with it. There's not not crazy, but there was a good amount more in the second, even more in the third, and then fucking Steph Wilson comes to us. We had a we gave him a cover, or we we got a cover from him um, for issue two, and then he came to us issue three, and he's like, "You need to stop being a fucking prude. You're gonna." He didn't say fucking because he doesn't swear like I do, but. It's the intent. He basically said, you need to stop being a fucking prude. I'm giving you a naughty and a nice, and that's how it's going to go. And I was like, okay, Sean, we, we've got a naughty and a nice cover from Steph. And he's like, oh, all right. How does that affect the budget? And I'm like, actually, it's really doable, super doable. He's like, great, cool, good, we're in. And I was like, fuck, okay. I guess we've got a naughty and nice then. Like, And right. it, it, the whole book has done it itself. It just mm -hmm. like it adds new layers. Everyone adds new layers. Fucking this issue, um, uh, our letterer, all along from day one has said, "This is not the book for me. I like my bad guys bad, my good guys good. This is too. This is all gray shit, and and it's nasty and it's rude. It's not for me." And we're like, "That's fine. It's not gonna be for everybody." And and we like that you don't like it. Like, yeah, I, I like that someone's like. Oh fuck! This is brutal. Great, that's what I want. I want you to be offended. Like I want someone to be offended. If they are, we did good. But he read this most recent one, and he was just like, "Dude, I would read this. Like this is a whole other. You guys are growing, and and this series is really fucking making it happen." And I was like, "Okay, yeah. cool. That's 
that's a big deal. And and he, in turn, started adding more stuff, and his lettering grew, and 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 he added in some added some artistic flair to it, which we didn't expect. So it was really cool. There's something to be said about the book because a lot of people out there are re requesting or requiring their team of people to stick to, like to stick to their strict this has to be this way this has to be this way and with belial uh i know that chuck and i have really kind of said okay well here's the idea we want to see what you do with it all of us have our different thought process and different things that we're going to notice and different things that we're going to do. And it's those niche thoughts that kind of creep their way in. And those ideas, uh, Gregory Warnchak's nipple, there was a opportunity in the first one where everybody was having that, that Batman controversy where it was covering his, his junk. Yeah. Yes. So that we threw, threw that in there just as kind of a little ha ha Yo. for anybody that might be, you know, but it's those moments where we all get to be ourselves in the book and we're just bringing all of those elements. So um, in that, I think that it's really come through as having a lot of things that speaks to a wider um, like variety of people. It's you're letting the book be itself. And I think everybody is on there. You're kind of going like they're like, initially they might be like, I don't know about this. And, but then they read it. It's like, Oh, I get this. Like I said, Ultimately, based on what I've read, this is really a book about a friendship of a bunch of guys in the bar. Ultimately, like if you break it all down, all the all the all the trappings, right? One guy wants to get back what was his, and all everybody around him is like, "I don't know if you can do it," and 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 because and, these guys look big and bad and tough and in worst case dumb. But I digress. Um, you know, but <laughs> <laughs> but but. It, it, it's one of those things where you look at it and you go, okay, the answer to conflict really isn't the battle. It's what it is. It's the camaraderie. And it would make sense then that anybody doing the book would have that same level of camaraderie to some degree. Right. Because like Sean, you had like this evil hellish book. Chuck said, I'm, I'm, I'm making it funny because it's funny. Right. Cause I'm going to have fun mm -hmm. with this. And then somewhere along the way, that fun got infectious to everybody. And everybody was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Like fun, like fun in of itself is infectious. I mentioned this with John yesterday, and I'm, and I'm going to mention this here. You don't necessarily need a Shakespearean epic book to sell. You just need, it can be, don't get me wrong, right? Mm -hmm. right? It can be, Right. And you can do that in comedy too. I like, like, I, I, yeah, you I, can. I, yeah, you can. We did. We did. Yeah, I know. And, 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 and me, me and Chuck have talked about Terry Project before in the past. Mm. So, so, so I definitely know you can do it. Yeah. No, but, it's funny because we actually have a Shakespeare joke in issue three. We yes. actually, we actually pulled it off. So it, it's funny that you're going there and we're both like, we're looking at each other right now going, this motherfucker hasn't read issue three and he's talking about it's Shakespearean. And I'm like, yeah, it is. We, we got there. Oh dude, you got, there's a little, there's even a little paradise lost in your story. There is just a touch yeah. of it, but it's there. That's him, it is yeah. there. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. right. I'm sorry. I'm a literary nerd. Yeah. I, I write books oh. for a living. Just the way it just, no, I it's respect just like, that man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it, it's one of those things where like, but ultimately for all of that stuff, for all that stuff, you have a fun book. And really, that's what people come for. They come for the fun, and you wow them with some with an occasionally profound thought here and there. That's what comedy's supposed to do, honestly. That's, that's the best comedy, is make people think a little bit, and then you walk away, right? That's and why people that, like George Carlin got so huge, mm, you know? I look at like if you look at comedy today, I look at somebody like Chappelle. Like he he does a lot of creative stuff on his own. And some of that stuff really makes you think and it's really profound. Some of it makes you laugh, some of it makes you cry. Carlin was very cerebral. Like a lot of the stuff he did was incredibly cerebral. And a lot of the stuff, unfortunately, is very accurate in today's times. It's just you know, the older I get that I listen to Carl. It's like when I watched the net, like the original movie, The Network. That was a comedy initially. It's not funny anymore. 
it's like uh, it's sexy. It used to be funny. Now it's not so funny because it kind of came true. It's too close know. to home. Yeah. Wait, wait, yeah. In 19, when the 1977 like comedy about television is now, this is kind of how it really is. I, I need a drink. I just, I, I think I need a drink. What, what the hell happened? Why did we go this way? If, but, you, if you lean far enough into it, even the movie They Live is practically real nowadays. Oh, oh no, they, they Live is. It's funny where They Live is real is actually of all things the billboard signs. It's of all the all the things, all the in like. There's all these like sometimes hidden little messages in the billboards and the logos, the designs. And if you look really carefully, it's like, hey, oh, oh, it's like. I can't look at Disney's logo the same way anymore, and I mean, <laughs> even I can't. And also, even even um, even this. As much as I'm here right now and drinking a coffee, I know exactly what that symbol is like. Oh, logos are everywhere. So no, they live is is there is a, there is a bit of truth to it, and it always has been. But yeah, you kind of you kind of wish you kind of wish sometimes that it was more entertaining than true. Like I, I could laugh up a network once yeah. upon a time can't do that anymore speaking of of the uh of your surroundings i have a question for you as somebody who runs his own show as well i i kind of like having control of my environment you motherfucker i dude i did when i first did his show i did a deep dive and he did a show where it was him and another guy at a convention yeah you remember i told him this story it was him and another guy at a convention. There, it's afterwards. They're having dinner, and all of a sudden, the interview basically stops, and they're talking to the waiter, ordering from the waiter. And I'm like, the interview is still fucking going, and they're just like hamming it up with the waiter. And I was like, what? But it was like still entertaining and fun. So to me, I'm a bit of a control freak. I want to control as much as possible. Yeah, the dog might be freaking out a little bit, but I can improv with that. But there's way too much around you that you can't control that would fuck me up. So how the fuck do you deal with that? Okay. Do you want my – okay, so let, let me let – I me asked. <laughs> the answer is what feels realist? Perfect order or just a touch of chaos? The answer is just a touch of chaos. Because the truth of the matter is the reality we all live in, whether we want to admit this or not, is we are not in control. <laughs> so I can, I can, I can, so and subconsciously, you know this. So when I go to a restaurant and I order and it's entertaining, why is it entertaining? Because it's real. Yeah. It's real. That's why it's entertaining. When Harrison, that three year old, comes on the show and holds my show hostage, it's <laughs> real. <laughs> right. And it's not, it sounds funny, right? How I put that, but it, it, I have I have learned in this life, and something I learned a very long time ago. I'm not really in control of much. What I'm in control of in this life is really just one thing, and one thing only is my reactions to whatever stimuli around me. Right? That's it. I've had shows. Now there are situations. Don't get me wrong. On like I had an interview with Rob Sawyer, and 30 minutes before. The show like, the was about to go on the air. The power went out. I was on me. I screwed up. I made a mistake. A big, giant mistake. It, it, it was a, it's a very snake-bitten interview all the way around, right? And, and, and it was just, like, unbelievable. Like, that kind of stuff drives me nuts. But what I realized, like, when I realized is, like, well, I got to make do with what I got. And I make do with it. And what I've learned is the chaos around me is the chaos around me. Do I let the storm in or do I just ride the waves around it? There's one interview, by the way, where I literally start in one restaurant and end up going to another restaurant. And I left that walk all the way in on purpose. Just because. <laughs> just because. Joe Compton, one of my favorite people, he loves that interview. He goes, no one else would do that. And I know. Yeah. It's like, why would you do it? Why would you do it? It's like, because it's real. It's real. No one be – like, like – you, like, it was, I like, and here's the other thing. I'm pretty authentic dude. And I say that like, like I'm pretty, like what you see is what you get. The ability to allow that chaos around me adds to that authenticity. 
Does that make sense? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. You just have to, right? I've learned a long time ago, shit's never going to go go to plan. So why fight it? Just go with the chaos and see what good things come out. And if you go with it, more often than not, it still works out. No. Right? More often than not. And also, if you're a control freak, that also means you're a little bit of a perfectionist. And that's the other, right? And that also means, and so and this is the other thing I've learned in life. I don't want to be perfect. I want to be great. I don't want to be perfect. There's a difference. Perfection is the death of change. Greatness is to strive for change. And I'd rather be always changing and growing and being than being in this perfect, sterile environment where nothing's going to fucking change. Because that's just going to put me to fucking sleep eventually. Because that's, that's not life. Life is yeah. motion, change, growth. I want that realism. So when I let this chaos in, what I'm actually letting in is change. Embrace chaos. That's right. <laughs> Embrace the chaos. That's what we do. That's what Belial is. It's all chaos. Everything's yeah. I, I, well, kind, kind, kind of. I actually think there's a really smart story in there too. So I just think, I just think, again, in that particular environment, like think about Belial, like with how I just described my situation, my, my podcast with your comic. You're letting your creators add their little smidges of ingredients here and there. And it's created something you did not expect. Dare I say it's better than what you would have done on your own if you had been so picture perfect and tight. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it, the process and having a more fun book where everybody can be themselves and we just let things happen and it almost seems to almost grow on its own has allowed for many genuine opportunities and has led the book to rise in a much better way than if I was like, no, this is the way it's going to be, especially with being fledgling comic creators. I can't pretend going into the first series that I'm doing, thinking or trying to tell people or present myself like I know what the hell I'm doing because I don't. You never do. It, yeah. It's fun. It's funny. We had, I, I have a good buddy of mine who came to me and he said, uh, Hey, what the fuck is with your logo? I was like, what do you mean? You don't like it? And he's like, which one? I said, well, we have a main logo. He's like, yeah, but the main logo isn't always on the main cover. It's not always in the same way. I was like, well, sometimes the main cover cries for something different. And he's like, well, yeah, but that's not how comics are normally made. And I was like, there's nothing normal about this comic, man. This, this book is, is fucked up, and we're just embracing it and having fun with that. And he's like, yeah, I guess. I was like, no, that's just all it is. is For us, like, and, and I remember having this conversation with Sean, too, where Sean was like, um, actually, um, this issue, uh, we put a different logo on it because we had this, like, uh, he ended up doing this, like, marquee-style logo. And he's like, I think that this works so much better uh, than our regular logo because it works with the actual art. And I was like, yep, I a thousand percent agree. And, and yeah, we just, we went with it because we're indies. We can fucking do that. Pros well, can do it too. No, 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 see, see. They can, but. All right. Well, so no, anal. Each one of the issues, that was number one where it says Belial. Yeah. There's a purpose for it. Little guy yes. right there. He's spraying, right? He's spraying. We have number two, which yep. has a more stony, like medieval type of Belial. Would you say that that's our standard logo? That would that be one, probably the one that's been the most utilized. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that one looks like a more the most comic booky of the other ones. Now, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm not crazy about this logo. And the reason why is I actually think it's too clean. This one that's right here? Too, yeah. Too clean. That's I wanted to lean into the fact that no, I had no, no. like the stained I, glass holy stuff in the back. Oh no no no! I, I get it, but you know what I would have done? You know what I would have done? I would. You know what I would have done? You know how like the chalice is late? You know how you know how the chalice has a liquid in there? That's fun. You know how the chalice yeah. has like a liquid in there? I would have had that bright thing, but I would have spilt the liquid all over the mm. logo because uh. that uh, because again, you're kind of you, you're kind of defiling everything, right? That's cool. I like that. 
I like that. Uh, for like this one and like the Chris Mad uh, covers, we did try to stick as close to the oh, like the album cover art that they're an homage from. So like this yeah. goes back to the Bad Out of Hell album cover, and the 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 way that it was lettered on the album cover was similar to this. Same thing with the Chris Mad cover. I actually got the the Megadeth um, font and used it for the cover. So I got a question for you, Sean. Are you a metal fan like Chuck is? Not as big. I listen to a lot, like a lot of everything. Like Chuck will tell you, he's metal, all metal, all the time. And you might catch me listening to some Frank Sinatra. You might find me listening to some Tim McGraw or Slipknot or, you know, Nate Dogg or any number of different things. Well, see, I, 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 interview, I interview metal bands, but I also, I'm much like you. I listen to a little bit of everything. I, 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 have to, I, I have to confess this. I think I've become a Taylor Swift fan. I think I've become a Taylor Swift. I have to, I have to I've actually had that confession on the air. It's like, she just does good music. I have to respect, I have to respect that. But here's what I'm going to say. Sorry I'm for sorry. you. Hey, 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 listen. Hey, listen, man. I'm still listening. To, I, I found all my, um, uh, you'll, like, you'll dig this one. I found all my OTEP albums. Like I'm from the storage locker. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. Yeah. I found my OTEP lot. So nice. it's like Generation Doom is still sweet after all these years. So love that album. So I, again, I, I go, I go both ways, but here's what I was going to say about your logos. And I think so metal, I'm going to go from a metal and jazz perspective. You know what metal and jazz have in common? They're fans of their art. Metal, metal creators love music. They play with music. They experiment it. Basically, the way they do it is, what if we take this classical song and make it like more passionate, more angry, more emotional, right? There is so much classical music in metal. It's actually unbelievable mm -hmm. to me, right? Just they get, they're big. Like most metal guys are music fans. You guys are like jazz though. And, and I'm going to say more like jazz than metal because you're not necessarily about making it angry. But what you're doing very quietly is do, what jazz likes to do is they'll take do the same thing metal does. They'll take a classic song, but they'll go the other way. It's like, how much energy can we put into it? How far can we take the song and it still be the song? Right? They both, yeah. like, like I said, I, and, that's how I, and that's how I see Belial with you guys is this is, you have to have permission sometimes. I, I, like when I started drawing, right, my thing was, the first the fear was what if i suck and then the second point was so what if i suck i'm gonna have fun and i kind of feel like this is the book where you guys are learning how to be those creators you want to be this is like your like so you'll try and i'm not sure i'm not going to sure you're gonna hit a home run out of the park every single time but you're you're swinging and you're saying what can we do? Why, why not do this? And I think that is a very, again, it's infectious. Yeah. The hits go so much further when you swing, when you lean into it. Yeah. So we've leaned into everything that we, that comes our way. Yeah. It, it was funny. We were, um, Wendy was watching one of the, um, one of the videos that we did. Cause Sean and I have been on, I don't even know how many shows for this campaign. And um, she was watching one of them, and she was like, and we were talking about how the, I believe it was actually Blake's Buzz, because he was talking, he was really big into, man, you guys really went after the Catholics kind of hard. And I was like, yeah, uh, I, I kind of did. And I, I, I have okay. a little bit of a chip on my shoulder where they're concerned. And um, Wendy was, and, and I told, you know, Wendy and I were talking about it, and I said, um, I said, do you think that, those jokes went too far. And she goes, yeah, I kind of do. And I said, why didn't you call me out on them? And she goes, you were never going to say no. Like you, she said that my, basically what she was saying was she knew that for her, the jokes went too far, but even if she brought it up, I was probably going to be like, yeah, no, that one's like... sticking around, man. That's that's a swing I have to make, and if I fail, and it's the same with the the Shakespeare joke, you know. And I've talked about it a couple times on this run, where I did the Shakespeare joke, and it didn't land because Wendy and Sean 
didn't know the quote. They didn't know the quotation. And I was like, cool, but this joke's fucking funny. So how do we make it work? And the three of us kind of kept hammering away until we were able to make it work, whether you know the quotation or not. Yeah. And that's just sometimes you just and, – and that was us going swing and a miss. And it's like, okay, cool, but you got three more – you know, like you've got more pitches. So what are we going to do to make sure that this one – just goes as far as we can possibly hit. And I'm I'm really proud of that joke. Not only because I I I stuck by my guns and I said, no, no, we gotta make this happen, but because the team came together and went, Cool, how do we make this joke work? Because Chuck is pretty fucking ready to hang himself on this joke. How do we how do we make this one stick around and everyone's gonna get it, or as many people as possible? <laughs> So, so basically, so, ba- so basically, what you're telling, what you're telling me is, you were gonna, that was a hill you were gonna die on. This joke's fucking oh, happening. Ready. There was a we couple had, hills I was gonna die on. I was gonna say, <laughs> we, I think everybody throughout the process has had a couple of those moments, whether it's changing a panel that something is lettered on, or a design element that was penciled in, or it was scripting that needed to change or a logo that wanted to be presented. We've all had hills to die on in this book. And it was a matter of everybody just coming together and being like, okay, well then how do we work it? So we won't have to die and we can just take that hit together and fight our way through it. Yeah. Okay. So I got to ask this. This just seems like a fun one. So how, so how much closer is the creative team doing this book? Because it sounds to me like, you gave everybody like Carter Blash go nuts in their own ways. Mm-hmm. That I would imagine would has created a much more, you're more, you, I'm not cohesive, more of a family environment. Hey, but Chuck, I got this idea. Hey, Sean, I got this idea. What is this idea? You know, that kind of. It thing. means that we have a team that is sticking together through the completion of the four part series. Yeah. Instead of having somebody that gets tired of the process or doesn't want to be involved or they don't understand it by the end of issue two or something and drop off and we have to find somebody new. We have all the original people from issue one all the way through. And not only that, we've had those team members say, I better be on the next one. Yeah. You know, in fact, the story is Scott, our letterer. He was supposed to do the lettering for Wendy's book. He got really bad carpal tunnel and told Wendy, I'm so sorry. I will help you get another letter, but it can't be me. I can't do it. And she was like, okay. And he was healing up and he was taking care of himself. And I, I spoke to, to Sean. I said, we gotta, we gotta look for another letter for issue three. And he's like, okay, I really didn't want to have to do that, but you know, it is what it is, and poor guy's hurt. Like, what are you going to do? So we were really – we were not doing a very good job of looking, though. Like, we were just kind of, like, kicking it dirt and just being like, I don't know. There's no one around I'm really excited to bring in necessarily. <laughs> like, it felt weird. And um, we started to get closer to where we were going to need the letterer. And um, Scott hit me up, and he's like uh, – Hey man, so where's Belial? And I was like, actually, we're heading in. We're you know we're we're like into inking right now, so we're probably gonna start lettering pretty soon. And he goes, I'm still in the book, right? And I was like, I thought you couldn't do it. He's like, I healed up for this book. I want to finish this series off. And I was like, Oh fuck yeah yeah, if you can do it, it's yours. And he was like, Yeah yeah yeah. And I didn't even have to talk to Sean about that. I was like, Okay cool. And then I of course I told Sean. I was like, Sean. He wants in. We don't have to look for anyone else. He's like, oh, good. Oh, thank God. I really didn't want to look. <laughs> so now it's, again, so you just know you have the right people. So you don't want, you don't want, you don't want. And also, if you have something that you know you're going to be really proud of later on, you, you don't want to fuck it up. Yeah. Like, you yeah. just don't. Right? You just don't. And, and when I, you I find totally... a recipe that works, man, stick with it. Yeah. Or the old saying, folks, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Right? It's just, yeah, yeah, just don't. And, and these, this is a team where we're all like, cool, if we're going to go down, the whole ship's going to go down together. Like, why why anyone jump off? And I think we're all, we're all at the point, too, where we're pretty fucking proud 
of the work that's being done, the swings that are being made. And so, yeah, yeah let's just let's just do it. Especially now we're done three issues, same team all the way through. Um, we haven't even discussed issue four. Like, of course, Sean and I have discussed issue four. We know what's happening. But we haven't discussed, like, okay, so is Wendy editing again? Are we going to have um, – are we going to keep Greg? Like, none of those were conversations. It just happened. It's like – did you hear about um, Led Zeppelin? Yeah. Uh, Led Zeppelin, it was the four guys, same four guys all the time. And when John Bonham, the drummer, passed away, all three of the guys just went, band's done. But none of them said it, like none of them got together and said it. They just knew, we're not doing this unless it's all four of us. It's over. And so... That I think that's kind of where we're at. I mean, obviously, if Scott had had to leave, we were going to finish it off. But no one was excited. Like I said, we were kicking dirt, just being like, oh. And I mean, no offense, you can't throw a stone in the indie comic universe and hit a like and not hit a letterer. You know what I mean? Or someone who can letter. Oh, yeah. So if we wanted to, we easily could have had one. We just didn't want to fucking look. We already had one. We, we didn't want to, you know, you, how do you replace your brother? You know what I mean? We didn't want to do that, and we didn't have to. So that's kind of cool. And, again, we haven't talked about who's going to be on issue four, but it's because why would we? We already know who the team is. So there's only four issues. Now, on a, on a personal note, even reading issue one, only reading issue one at this point, there's way more room than four issues. I can already tell you could do an awful lot with this if you wanted to, right? You have a bar in hell. I mean, that, that just writes itself, man. It just, it just literally writes itself. So, I mean, is Fork really going to be it? Or are you guys thinking, you know? We've left ourselves open. We've created through each issue some creative outs to be able to have side stories, to be able to have different characters uh, have their chance to take the limelight possibly in, in, in their own series. And um, we knew that through the creation and our feedback that different people were connecting with different characters and allowing those opportunities to kind of gestate on their own and with enough feedback. And if there's a demand, then of course we're going to go and lean into that. So It'd be it'd be dumb not to continue where you've grown successful because that stuff just a catalyst for other successes. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, no, absolutely. This is Belial's story. So Belial's story, his the the main basic crux of what he's having to deal with. Yes, it's going to be done in these four issues. Mm-hmm. But as far as like anyone else picking up and whatnot. Dude, it's very much open. The Belial verse does not have to end at all. So yeah, no. there's a lot to play with. Yeah, I know. I... Through having those outs and people generating their own interest within our characters and the Belial verse, so to speak, then who's to know what kind of p- other people wouldn't be absolutely excited to share a story with us? Oh, I, well, I have a next. I have a next story in my head already. It's like I could do something with that guy. I have some fun with that <laughs> because I I already have that in my head. It's like I, I could do something with him. Well, but, and actually, um, so there's a comic, the um, an anthology that's coming out in the next week or so. It's called Tales from the Collective, Issue Three, and the Collective is a very cool uh, comic book shop in Florida, in Orlando, Florida. And I think it's Adelaide, Florida, but whatever. Orlando, Florida. And um, what they do is they bring in um, shorts from ongoing comic book series and just kind of show off those series and whatnot and show it off at their shop. So we were brought on. They're doing a Halloween issue, and we did a Belial book. But really, it's not a Belial short. It's a Link short. Yeah, And so... It's four pages of Link. It's called um, Cthulhu Link, and it's Cthulhu versus Link. How does Link win? I'm, I'm very curious how he wins there because he, I, I feel like there's because he's gonna cheat. 
Yeah, you guys well, are how he's going to change. He's clever, man. He's clever. He's bigger than he leads on to be, and he knows more of what's going on than he leads into, too. So, well, and also, I love these. I loved the idea of these two against each other because they really are kind of a rock and a hard place because Cthulhu really. is, yeah. Yeah, right? That's <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, Cthulhu is the elder god of fear. But Link is not afraid of anything. Like, stupidly, sociopathically, unafraid of anything. What the fuck does that look like when the god of fear goes up against someone who's just not afraid and has no right to not be afraid? What the fuck does, do those four pages look like? Honestly, you laugh your tits off. I was very happy with it. I think the whole crew, we brought uh, Eric Cockrell in. Eric Cockrell did pencils for it. Of course, my man, Sean, did the inks. And uh, he and I just dated this story and, and worked it out. And I got to write again. Wendy edited. And, um, oh, uh, this time, though, we didn't have, because we were already kind of switching out some of the teammates, team members. And instead of putting more work on um, Scott, we had um, Travis's letter, Jerome Gagnon, come in and, and do this. So it, it what's nice is because it's Link, it gets to have its own feel and thus its its own pencils and all that kind of stuff. So it's pretty badass. Yeah, yeah I'm just saying, like, you have, like you said, you literally have, like, the perfect playground for many different kinds of stories if you want. And I'm like, yeah, I, 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 when he said just four issues, it's like, that would be a shame if it was only four issues. I did. I, I right. This might be your Discworld, my friend. Right. <laughs> it'll, be nice to see, it'll be nice to see what happens when we're able to to leap to get to number four, and see how it comes together for that finale. And if it's um, if it keeps getting bigger, like like it has been, then we'll probably be in pretty good standing to kind of move forward with some other things. But you never know. Yeah. Well, no, I, hey, listen, I mean, there's something set in stone. I'm just saying, like, I can just tell you guys have a blast doing it. And that's just, that's just, that's just like, you have a blast. And again, if it, if it ain't broke, why well, fix it? I mean, obviously, there's other stories you probably both want to do. So actually, I want to ask Sean one thing, then then we get to the, all the wonderful plugs and plays and stuff. But here's this. You came to Chuck, I asked him to write your story. But you came, this is essentially your idea. Have you written anything? I'm just, I'm just curious. Um, okay, so a technical writer credit, I guess, could be given to a book that I'm actually making that is going to be releasing uh, middle next month, is I adapted a creepypasta story that I found to comic book called I Drive for Cerber. But I also have a, um, what would you call that? A psycho supernatural horror book or four part series that I have completely written and the first part is edited and ready to go once I resolve these two books. So that is one that I've completely le leaned into and completely written myself. So well, yes, I well, have written. And and Josh, you and I are writers. We know the technicalities and all that. This guy's fucking hiding right now. The fact of the matter is, yes, Cerber, the story is someone else's. He wrote that book. You wrote the page, the, the panel breaks down and all that kind of stuff. You wrote the dialogue. That's you. So you did write that book. So, so yeah. So Sean, Sean, let me let me give you a little thing. So mine of my series is Alice in Wonderland mashing up with Greek mythology. It's not my story in the sense that it's not originally my idea. I wrote the dialogue. I wrote the story. I mashed it up my way. It's not the story ideas are necessarily yours. It's how you tell the story that makes it yours. I got You're you. A I got you. You're a writer. It's okay. You're a writer. Right? It's all good. All right. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll you, take you, it. You better. Because I, I got to put you and Paul in the same. Paul was like, I'm a rookie. It's like, you're a rookie till November. And I'm not calling you a rookie anymore. I'm just going to call you a professional. You got to right. deal with it. Yeah. Right? So same with you, buddy. You're a professional at what you do, and like I said, and you're creating great books, and you should be very proud of yourself because you've, you've done a lot, and you should be. And Mr. Chuck, so editing less, writing more, or trying to try to keep in both worlds? Jeez. Editing less, writing more, actually. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I actually just got some pencils back for an anthology that uh, I'm a part of. Um, that's probably going to be coming out next year with some pretty fucking big names. Um, and I'm really proud of it. And it was, I get to kind of play with my comedic stuff again and, and have some fun there. Um, I just got finished, you know, they just mailed out the, um, Cthulhu invades Wonderland, which I got to do two pieces for. Um, I've got, uh, of course this, um, next month we're going to have the, the uh, season four of um, Essence House, Chronicles of the Essence Guard. That's going to come out um, to just tons of stuff. Um, Broke Down in Four Dead Bodies, The Trade. I have a um, four-page story in that called uh, Bitch Rodeo. <laughs> Which I'm very I'm very happy about because I, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited about that story. Yeah. I'm excited about that story because I enjoyed Sons of Anarchy an awful lot. Uh, but I also have worked with, um, as, a, as a cook, especially in the local area that I work with, I've worked at a lot of biker bars and gotten to know a lot of these bikers and whatnot. And let's be honest, the crazy shit that they do to each other and to other people, it's downright, like, just like, how the fuck did you come up with that? So... I had this one idea and it was because I was walking around at one of the bars. I'd been playing poker and having a beer and somebody had this great shirt on and the back of the shirt said, if you can read this, the bitch fell off. And I laughed my balls off. I thought that was so hilarious. And then I came up with bitch rodeo. And what that is, is if somebody has fucked you over and you want to screw with them, you hog tie them, tie the, their hands behind their back, you put them on the back of the, the bike, and then you see how long they can stay on the bike for. Oh, That's Bitch Rodeo, and it was pretty fucked up, and it's, uh, it's a hell of a story. I'm very proud of it. So, uh, yeah. That's going to be coming. Thanks, man. That's going to be coming to Broke Down and Four Dead Bodies. So, yeah, yeah. Just me being able to play, and I love not being stuck in one thing. Like if I did just the stuff that I wanted to do, it would probably be mostly fantasy. So I love that other people come to me and they're like, I have a sci-fi thing. Great. Let's do that. I have this weird crime thing. Great. Let's go do crime. Fine. I have the, I, I want to do Alice in Wonderland, whatever. Fine. Let's go do that. Like, I feel like your approach to being a writer is like my approach at being an inker. <laughs> <laughs> we get along so well, yeah. Well, 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 well there's there, again, it's about knowing who you are and who you aren't, right? Like, like I, yeah, that that's what it is, right? And so Chuck has had the pleasure and privilege of editing many books. Now he's getting on the other side of that coin. It's like, motherfuckers, I'm gonna write this shit. I'm gonna knock it yeah. out of the park, right? Yeah, right. And that's what he's gonna do. And that's why, in, in the process, he's gonna find what he loves and it's and it's probably not going to be different than the guy that looks he looks in the mirror and sees right it's not gonna be yeah. that different but that is the process is figuring out who that person is me i'm a young adult author that occasionally dabbles in serious stuff that that's what I, that's who i am right and that's that that's what i write and sean you 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 you're, you're secretly you secretly want to be in a heavy metal band you're just doing apocalypse of horror and doom and 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 you just do it and right by yourself it's like doom doom it's like like it's just like it and and it seems like you're having fun and that's who Absolutely. you are and that's and that that's it like you finding the best version of yourselves to share to the world and that's the thing is chuck's on the other side of the journey now he's edited everything he knows what he likes. He knows what he doesn't like. Now he's going to do it with writing. He's going to learn what he likes. He's going to learn what he doesn't like. And then that's what he's going to do. So. Yeah. Good luck, guys. Both of you. Thank you. I oh, appreciate yeah. it, man. Yeah. So how long is your Kickstarter going on until? I think we got about four more days. It yeah, says October five, but we're almost... Fifth. October I think we're, we're yeah. almost done with day five. It'll, it'll be We four actually days. just... For me, it clicked over to four days. Yeah. So, okay, so I got to talk my asshole to a boss on this show and move your show up so you can actually do it. I mean, I know Chuck knows how much of a dick my boss on the show is. Yeah, you know, he knows oh, how much of it is. Oh, such yeah. a dick. 
Yeah. Well, it's just it's funny because I'm doing, I'm doing the same with John next week too. So I guess I but I guess I'm going to doing your show first because it's not, it's like yours runs out faster than his. So I'll do that. So I'll make sure I'll make sure your Monday's episode on the audio. So cool. But yeah, okay, nice. that'll hit us right in the sweet spot. That's that's the plan. That's We're all the about plan. the sweet spot. I know. That's why it's your Sunday special on your on your OnlyFans there, Chuck. I know. That's why. That's totally right. That's how you got Sean. <laughs> oh yeah. And he's a keeper. Oh. I try. Oh. I try. You're doing it. That's a, all right. So where's your link to your Kickstarter, guys? www.kickstarter.com <laughs> slash projects <laughs> slash Belial Tricurious slash Belial dash one dash three. That's so much. <laughs> he's being mean to me. That's what he's doing. It's like copy paste into the private chat, Chuck. Oh, uh, I, mean, I might be. Actually, could you do that? Because I'm looking at my computer, but I'm on my phone. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that, that that would be good. So I can actually display it, so people can actually see it on the Twitch. <laughs> see, this is a good example of just showing that we still have room to grow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a trained motherfucking professional. This ass Chuck. Uh, <laughs> I'm an untrained professional. So yeah. <laughs> Right, there. that's right. Chuck, Chuck doesn't know what he's doing. I pretend to know what I'm doing. There's the that's the difference between us. That's the yeah, dude. Between. Four days, four days, man. I know. Well, so I mean, the important thing is we're funded. Yeah, congrats. That was a congrats. big moment today. Yeah, that's off to Chuck's people. Yeah, we jumped up by like almost four hundred bucks today. I was gonna say I'm people not, even after we find a couple more people jump on. Oh. Well, no, I'm not surprised. Like ends of campaigns, there's always those huge massive jumps. They're great. So I, I kind of feel bad because by the time I'm really paid and able to help you guys, I'll be like, this campaign's long done. So it's like, oh, but for everybody watching, everybody listening, take a look at the Kickstarter project on the display right now. If you are listening to this episode, click on the link below and you will actually get to go in into Chuck's and Sean's Kickstarter, right? I promise you it's good stuff. Reliable will make you laugh your ass off. And somewhere along the way, you're going to realize it's got a lot of heart. So somewhere along the way, you're going to realize that, folks. Actually, before I get to my stuff, is there anything else you guys want to promote right now? I should ask this. We're at the end of the presentation. We might as well see. Is there anything else you guys like? contacting you guys anything like that what do you want is there anything you guys want to do there you first on me for sure i guess i can like i said i i'm doing that i drive for server the creepy pasta comic book that's going to be hitting kickstarter uh hopefully it's in the process of being approved right now so i should be able to uh get that going uh in the middle of october and that is about jim a guy who's down and out on his luck who applies for a new job as a on-demand transportation service kind of like an uber turns out to be almost like uber for the paranormal so he has to not only face a bunch of creepies cryptids and other kind of cool stuff like that but he also has to help out a passenger that enters his car that he knows from his past and he gets sucked into trying to find their killer so it's a lot of fun it really is um and as far as where to find me? I am on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. On Facebook, I am Sean Barbour. On Instagram and TikTok, I am Instinct, I-N-S-T-I-N-K-E-D. So join me for fun and fabulous entertainment there. Okay, so before we get to all that wonderful stuff, I'm just going to put your Instagram on the Twitch Make sure when this is off the air, send me the link to all your other stuff you want me to prove all that stuff you mentioned there. Right. That way I can put it on the audio. All right, Mr. Chuck, you got always stuff going. So what, 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 what obviously Belial's number one, but what else is that? Oh, we're going to find you. Oh, like I said, next month you've got, um, uh, 
uh, Chronicles of the Essence Guard is going to hit all of your podcast sites. So wherever you get podcasts, season four is out. If you haven't want listened to it at all, it's completely free. You can listen to three seasons of wonderfulness. And then, of course, season uh, four is on its way. And then from there, of course, will be when that's done, will be the, the next novel. Um, and if you want to track me down, you can track me down on Facebook, Chuck Pino, P-I-N-E-A-U. You can track me down on Instagram, same thing. On Twitter, I'm at Chucky Pin. And then, of course, because we all love to show off our mugs, I have my own show as well every Tuesday night at 9 Central. Um, Chuck's Shop Talk on my Chuck's Raw Reviews YouTube channel. So come on by, check us out. We talk to different... Um, uh, we, we talk to different creators all the time. Uh, last week, I had Travis Gibb. Uh, before that, I had my man Sean there. Next week, I have a great manga creator from Canada named Eric Mullins. We've got tons of cool stuff going on, always learning and, and meeting new people. So it's a great place to come check things out. Awesome. All right. So we're going to do this in proper order here. Ladies and gentlemen, Belial is still live and it goes on off the air on October 5th. So while it's still here, you can bid now on these three amazing issues. Be Belial, Try Curious. I'm sure it'll be threes a company, you know, terrible threes company jokes in there. But we'll leave that for another day. You can definitely go check it out right now on Kickstarter if you really, really want to. And as for me, I also do advertising. I do video, audio, words, and pictures about projects, books, and yourselves. If you want something to build up those things, I am definitely the guy. The link is right there. And I'm not quite sure when on this weekend, ladies and gentlemen, but I do have a metal band from Calgary actually coming on. They are called Siren. They released some pirate metal. We're going to be talking about that. That is this weekend. Probably I'm guessing based on what I'm saying Sunday, but there is a chance it's tomorrow. I'll let you guys know when I know. But for everybody watching, everybody listening, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Stay inspired. Keep shining in the dark. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.